predating our study. There were these phenomenological studies, but the true mechanism of action of the Viprin gene product was not known. This study uh, represents a collaboration between Steve Almo's group uh, at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine uh, and Joyce Joes's group here uh, in the Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology at Penn State. What Steve Almo's group was able to discover uh, was that a small molecule was produced by the Viprin gene product. Um, this Viprin gene product is an enzyme. It's a member of the radical SAM family of enzymes. So with that knowledge of the potential mechanism of action, my laboratory was able to evaluate the antiviral activity and mechanism of this small molecule, uh, DDHCTP. Organisms uh, have a genetic material. Um, that material is either DNA or RNA. Um, in the case of viruses that are causing a lot of problems of late, Zika virus, for example, uh, it's an RNA virus. So the genome is uh, a long uh, ribonucleic acid. Chain terminators, nucleotide analogs, um, can interfere with the extension, the elongation of uh, that ribonucleic acid polymer. And if you prevent elongation to uh, the full length, then you now can't completely uh, encode all of the genes that the virus needs. And so the virus uh, will now uh, not grow. DDHCTP is the nucleotide analog. Nucleoside analogs are used to treat a variety uh, of viral infections. The number of antiviral nucleosides uh, in our therapeutic arsenal continues to increase. The major obstacle complicating the development of these drugs uh, is the off-target effects that cause toxicity. One of the most uh, exciting findings uh, associated with the discovery of DDHCTP is the fact that we have the first antiviral ribonucleoside that's actually genetically encoded uh, by the human genome. And that's very exciting because uh, it offers uh, the opportunity to uh, teach us perhaps how you create uh, an antiviral nucleoside that does not cause uh, harm or have any off-target or toxic toxicity issues. So once we understand the determinants of DDHCTP that confer upon uh, the molecule that's high efficacy but low toxicity, uh, we hope that this knowledge will facilitate uh, the integration of this information into the development of new drugs, new antiviral nucleoside drugs for other indications. To test the effectiveness of the compound, we uh, used actually Zika virus that we focus in our lab. So we used the compound in cell culture system where we grew the cells. We usually grow the Zika virus in, uh, in the presence of this compound. Uh, and we showed that uh, the compound is not cytotoxic. That does not affect the cells to begin with. And then uh, we used the cells with the compound to grow Zika virus. And we found that uh, when we use this compound, the uh, growth of Zika virus is affected. There is a significant reduction in virus production in the presence of this compound. We actually were working extensively with different strains of Zika virus. As you probably know, there are uh, outbreak strains of Zika virus that usually cause uh, microcephaly and birth defects, and uh, um, it's also a sexually transmitted uh, virus. So we had a system of 16 different strains of Zika virus from the original 1947 strain to the 2016 outbreak strains. And we tested uh, the one original strain and the two outbreak strains that grew really well and that grew poorly in the system. And uh, we used the compound against these viruses. And uh, with respect to the Zika virus and the effectiveness of this drug or this compound, uh, all the viruses were inhibited by the compound, irrespective of its uh, strain. Dr. Cameron's group tested this uh, compound against the viral polymerases in vitro system. And uh, we used it in, in vivo system, pretty much in using cell culture, uh, but the same, against the same 
protein. But we showed using the real virus and real cells that it actually happens in the living cell. It can be inhibited. Um, also, it, it has not been shown against Zika virus before. And Zika virus is an emerging pathogen and it's, it's getting a lot of media attention because of its birth defects associated with the infection. And there are no drugs or antivirals or antibodies or vaccines against Zika virus available. And this opens up new doors to test different inhibitors for Zika virus.